Hello and welcome to this Excel video tutorial. Today we're going to look at adding a data table to a pie chart in Excel. Now a word of warning, you can't do this natively in Excel, so this is a workaround. I've got my data here, so I'm going to start by selecting over just the data. I'm not using the headings here, and I'm going to insert a column chart. So I'm going here to column chart, just a very basic column chart. I'm going to remove the title from this, and I am going to make it a little bit taller. I'm going to add my data table at this point, so I'm going to chart elements data table, and I do want it to have legend keys, so I'm just going to click on legend keys. Now at this point my data is the wrong way around so I'm going to select on my chart. I'm going to click here on switch row column because at the moment what I'm focusing on is this data table. I just want the data table to look okay. So I'm going to start squeezing things in here a little bit, make it a little bit squarer up the top here and just make my data table look a little bit better. Now it's going to look better still if I remove things from it, so let's go here to data table and let's go to more options. In the options here I'm just going to remove the outline because that cleans things up quite a lot. You could also remove the horizontal if you wanted to, I just think that it makes for better reading if you use the horizontal. So right now we've got a reasonable data table but we don't have a pie chart. So we're going back to select our data again and this time we're going to insert a pie chart. Just using a regular pie chart here. I'm going to leave the title in because this is the title that will be the title for the chart. So I'm just going to type in office expenses here. But I don't want this legend here so I'm just going to remove it. I can do it through this panel here. I can just press delete. So I'm going to size down my chart area now so it's a little bit squarer and I'm going to place it where I want it to be over the top of the other chart. So you'll see that this chart's grid lines are causing me a bit of problem and also the size of the chart. So I've just selected on the plot area, I'm just going to make it smaller because then it's going to be easier for me to take the chart here and put it over the top and just mask out the underlying chart. So now I have two charts here, I need to do some cleaning up. So the first thing I'm going to do is sort of line this chart up, this pie chart up with pretty much what I want my elements to look like. I might be able to bring this in a little bit and just square things up nicely. So I've got borders on my chart, so I'm going to select on my chart, right click and I'm going to format chart area. And here with the border I'm going to set it to no line. And then I'm going to do the same on this chart here. Of course then it's going to be really difficult for me to see what's actually going on here because there is no background. But I am going to select the two charts, select the first one and then shift click on the one behind and then we can group them with shape format and go to group and group. So now my chart is grouped together, the pie chart is over the top of the column chart, the data area is here and if I go and change these figures you'll see that the entire chart changes as does the table. So everything's live here. But there are a few things that probably would be better if we sort it out. So I'm going to select over this pie chart and I am going to add data labels to it because I think it would be better. So I'm going to more options. I'm going to turn on category names and turn off value. It's always wise to turn on things before you turn everything off because otherwise you can lose everything. And I'm going to put my data on the outside end. So I just think that looks a little bit neater. Now this chart can be picked up, this group of elements can be picked up and saved for example as an image, but there is going to be a problem because if I click on this chart here and then this chart here, you'll see that they're different sizes. So we're going to end up with an image, a PNG image that doesn't have a white background and it's going to be really untidy. So if you want to save this as an actual picture or put it on something that is not pure white, this is what you're going to do. 
we're going to select these grouped objects here and we're going to put something behind them. So I'm going to insert and I'm going to shapes and I'm going to add a rounded rectangle. So I'm just going to put a rounded rectangle pretty much over the elements that I want to make sure have a clean background. From the shape format tab here, I'm going to do send to back because I want this blue thing to be behind everything. Now at this stage, the color's wrong. It needs to be white so that it provides a background for my shapes, but it's going to be really hard to work with if it's white. So I'm just making it blue. So I'm placing it where it's going to catch the surrounding. As you can see, this is what the ping image would have looked like. It would have had bumps in it. Well, we've now got a background for this. So I'm going to reselect over my grouped object and I'm going to choose group ungroup. And then I'm going to put all three objects together. So I already have my two charts selected. I'm going to shift click on the outside. So you can see I've got all three objects selected and now I'm going to group these. Having done that, I'm now going to pick up this back shape. You can see I've got the back shape selected and I'm going to fill it with white. So right click and make sure it is filled with white. Now I can put a border on it or not as I wish, but this is the shape that is now going to be saved if I copy this as a picture. So if I right click and choose save as picture, then our chart element is going to have this really nice background to it. So you can now take this chart and do things with it. It's a pie chart that looks like it's got a data table with it. In actual fact, it's a bit of a fudge, but it's all one object or it can travel as all one object. It updates perfectly, so it does get around the limitations that there are in Microsoft Excel. If you like carefully researched content like this, clearly presented in a step-by-step -step format so that you can get great results every time, then you'll love my other YouTube videos. So give this video a thumbs up and click to subscribe to the channel. And on the screen now, you'll see a video that I've handpicked for you to watch next.